guys, are you there? Can you, can you hear me? Am I coming through? Sweet. I just, I'm just here to let you know right now that we're going to kick off in two minutes. Two minutes. I don't know how much time that is. Maybe time enough for you to get on your dressing gown, get warm, turn on the heater, or maybe even put on the kettle for a hot cuppa. But we're going to start in two minutes. So get ready, get keen, and we'll see you soon. Good morning, my name is Rahel, and on behalf of me and the whole College Church team, we just want to say welcome. Today, we're going to worship our God together through music, through prayer, through giving, and through a word of God from one of our own theology students, Jesse DePruzel. Now, if you joined us live this morning, please say hello in the live chat. Let us know you're with us. If you join us via Facebook Live, please do me a favour and share this stream or even organise a watch party. You know, the more people that share this, the more people we can reach with the good news of Jesus Christ. Isn't that just amazing? Now, if this is your first time, I really want to encourage you to go to collegechurch.info and click on the first time guest link. You can also find the link in the live chat section. If you fill out your details, a member of our First Impressions team will reach out to you and send you a gift as our way of saying welcome and thank you for joining us. Anyway, I know today's service is just going to bless you. We're starting a new sermon series entitled Circles. You see, sitting in rows in church has its purpose. But for a deeper intimacy with God and those we do life with, sitting in circles is so much better. So in this series, we are journeying through the parables of Jesus and publishing questions each week for you to discuss in a circle. You can find these questions at collegechurch.info and click on the orange tab. Now, your circle might be your family, your circle might be your friendship group, it might be your neighbours, or if you're, in, if you're a student, it might be in dorms. So I encourage you in this series, build a circle and watch God move in it. But just wait, it gets so much cooler. You might be thinking, what about the kids? Well, we have questions for them too. So strap in, this is going to be a great series. As I said earlier today, we'll be hearing from Jesse DePruzel, one of the amazing students here at Avondale College. And in the coming weeks, we're going to be hearing from our pastoral team, as well as three students. So get excited for that. With all that being said, let's worship our God together through music. to stand with us in your living rooms and worship with us today. We're going to sing praises to our God. I will come into your presence, Lord. 
The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph.
Hey, thanks to the worship team for your service to others each and every week. We really appreciate it. Right now, I have a few announcements for you. We want you to know, church, that our series on Micah 6.8, whereby we spoke into the racism and injustice that we're seeing in our world, wasn't just to tick a box. Our pastors are in conversation with the International Justice Mission Australia. So please stay tuned in the weeks to come for an update on this. Now, you may or may not be aware, but our students are back on campus for semester two. So to all our students who are here locally and to those who couldn't be here due to our border closures, please know that you have a home here at College Church. Although we're not meeting in person at the moment, this is still your church. And we want you to know that you belong here and are accepted here. Our pastors are still working in their offices in the church. So please feel free to visit them for anything. For the rest of our church members who aren't students, can I please ask for you to pray over our students as they begin this semester? That will be such a blessing, and I know my grades really need it at this time. As we announced last week, Cafe Rejuve is open each week during the semester from Monday to Friday, and we'd love your help. We're looking for volunteers who would like to greet customers with a friendly smile, serve them and do a little bit of cleaning because, hey, we want to do everything possible to create a safe environment for our students and our community to come to. So if you want to volunteer some time, even if it's just an hour a week, please head to collegechurch.info at the top bar, click on Cafe Rejuve and you will see the option to sign up to volunteer there. We would love to hear from you. Now, next week is our homecoming weekend. College Church has partnered with our campus to bring you next week's homecoming church service. Next week, we'll have a special item organised by Avondale University College's very own Alita King. Our South Pacific Division President, Pastor Glenn Townend, will be bringing the word and our worship team have been asked to continue to lead out. So all in all, it's going to be an amazing time and everyone is invited, so we hope to see you there. Right now, I'm going to speak into our offering today. Each week, we collect an offering that goes towards a specific cause. This week's cause is Feed the House. Your giving this week feeds what we do here at College Church. In these unusual times we live in, your giving enables us to meet the local needs of those doing it tough, and it enables our online services every Saturday that starts with Beginners with Steph at 9.30 a.m., the link with Cal and Pastor Mickey at 10 a.m., then our church service at 11 a.m., which is currently streaming. So when you give to today's offering, you're supporting College Church. To give to this week's offering, you can head on over to egiving.org.au, select Avondale College Church, and you can give to this week's offering or you can return tithe. To everyone who is giving to our church with your finances during this time, thank you so much for your faithfulness. It is really, truly inspiring. With all this being said, it's now come our time for us to pray over all that we're doing. Hi church, my name is Bella. I'm a first year at Avondale and I'm studying secondary teaching. Please pray with me. Um, dear God, thank you for this week that we've had. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be back at college and be living on campus. Um, I just want to pray, pray for the church and everyone in it and also for the students that are coming back from PRAC. Um, please be with anyone affected by COVID and that they're safe. Amen.
Good morning, College Church. It's great to see you, or to be more uh, accurate, it's great to be seen by you. Um, We will be together again soon, hopefully. I'm very excited about that day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jesse. I am a theology student doing placement here at College Church. Uh, I would just like to say it is a great honor and I'm very thankful to Pastor Alex and Pastors Nimrod and Michaela uh, for lending me their pulpit and allowing me to speak to you today. Today, you've, uh, you've joined us in our Circles series. Now, our Circles series is all about the parables of Jesus. If you're new to church and you don't know what a parable is, a parable is a story that is told by Jesus that has a a hidden meaning, a second meaning. And so we're going to be exploring those today. The specific parable that I'm going to be talking about uh, is found in Luke chapter 10. Uh, It's one of the Gospels in the New Testament. Uh, It's called the Good Samaritan. Uh, The Good Samaritan is about a man who who sees someone uh, and goes above and beyond in helping him. As I said, it's found in Luke chapter 10. We're going to read that now and then we'll pray. So Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Here we go. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you'll live. The man wanted to justify his actions. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man, and that's important, a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant, or some other translations say a Levite, walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. And the next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Let's pray. Lord God, we just want to thank you and praise you uh, for who you are, Lord. Uh, We want to thank you for your Sabbath and for uh, giving us the time to just set aside and rest and think of you. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will use me as a willing servant, a willing vessel to impart the message that you have today uh, and help us to be open and receptive to it, Lord. Uh, I just want to thank you and praise you for all things. And it's in your name, Lord Jesus, that I do pray. Amen. If you're new to church, uh, you may not have come across this saying that I'm about to tell you. But if, you, uh, if you've been with us for any amount of time, you definitely will have. Uh, and that saying is WWJD, which stands for What Would Jesus Do? Now, this saying might have started out uh, at some point uh, with good intentions, uh, with people using it as sort of a, a reference for, for what they should be doing. However, these days, not so much. It's uh, usually used as a bit of spiritual manipulation when you want someone to do something uh, and they're not doing it for you. Um, you would say, come on, man, WWJD. Uh, and I would say, well, I'm still not giving you $500, Jeff, so please leave. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what we typically use it for. It's a bit more tongue in cheek these days. I desperately need it when I'm driving. Uh, a lot of my South Australian friends will be able to, um, to really attest to the fact that I can be quite an angry driver. Um, you know, when I'm driving, typically there's a lot of nonverbal communication involved. Um, you know, I'm driving, I'm overtaking someone. I'm just kind of tipping my hat to them uh, with one finger. Uh, and it's not my pointer finger um, or something similar to that. You know, just flexing that finger there uh, in, in salute of their driving skills. Um, now, I specifically said my South Australian friends. Uh, it very much died 
when I got here to Kurramong, and you're probably thinking, well, it's because Jesse's a better Christian now. Um, you know, a little bit, yeah, I guess, but also it's more the fact that uh, when you do that to someone in Kurramong, the chances of you then pulling up next to them in the church parking lot uh, 20 minutes later is, is very high. And on a related note, I would like to apologize to you, Dr. Wendy Jackson, if you're watching. Uh, yeah, I'm very, very sorry. So it's, it's in those situations where I do think the WWJD would be good for me. But look, irrespective uh, of, my, uh, of my bad road manners, I do think that maybe WWJD is not what Jesus had in mind uh, when he was here uh, ministering on earth. I don't think that when Jesus was preaching, uh, when Jesus was interacting with people, when he was telling his stories and his parables, I don't think that he wanted us to grab those and and use them as sort of a mind frame reference uh, for when we were in situations to think what would what would Jesus do in this situation and how do I how do I do the best out of this? Uh, because I think I don't think he wanted us to uh, to become sort of these uh, robotic good people where we make decisions based off this reference, this blueprint, if you will. I think he wanted us, I think he wanted there to be uh, an actual life change, a change within your heart so that you act instinctively. When the priest and the Levites saw this man lying on the ground, uh, they actually referred back to uh, the law of Moses that, that is referenced in this passage. They referred back to it and they thought, and they, they knew that if they touched this man, they were in danger of being seen as unclean and therefore as unworthy. And so by using that, that blueprint and that reference, uh, they thought, you know what? I'm not going to go out of my way for this man because uh, it could affect me. Whereas when the Samaritan was coming past, he, it, was a, it was a heart thing. It, the text says he felt compassion and he acted instinctively uh, towards this man. And because of that heart, because of that, that compassion and those, uh, and those instinctive actions born out of the compassion, it aligned him with, God, with what God would have wanted. And that's my first point today. It's not about having some sort of a mental reference so that you can go through and be like, how do I get enough kingdom points to be able to make it to heaven? No, instead, it's about having an actual real change within you so that when you see things happen, when you see things uh, in your own life or when you see things go on in the world, you can react accordingly so that you were aligning with the things of God. And that's necessary. That's needed. Because sometimes helping people is hard. Sometimes standing up for the little guy is difficult and it affects you. I know that normally, uh, you know, we, we hear all this great news about how science, science shows us that when we, when we help people, uh, you know, our brains send off all these little chemicals and all these signals and we feel good about it. But sometimes that's not always the case. And that's the case in this story here. Timothy Keller in his book, Ministries of Mercy, says that the Samaritan risked his safety, destroyed his schedule and became dirty and bloody through personal involvement with a needy person of another race and social class. And that quote brings to mind the story of Jesus and the woman at the well. Uh, that's another story. It's not a parable. Uh, it's, it's a story that Jesus actually participated in. It actually happened. It happened in John 4. It's recorded there. Uh, basically, Jesus needed to get from Judea to Galilee. Now, Jesus was a Jewish man and he had Jewish friends. And, and when, G, when Jews needed to get from there, from point A to point B, they typically took this, this wide berth around this area when they were going from Judea to Galilee, this wide berth around this, this area called Samaria. The reason they did that is because the Jews and the Samaritans had a, had a big problem with each other. They had arguments constantly over who was God's real people. And that spilled out into the mundane, so much so that they began to hate each other and were racist towards each other. That's why Jesus was so careful in the parable of the Good Samaritan to say that it was a Jewish man who was hurt and then it was a despised Samaritan who helped him because of this tension. So Jesus decides we're not going to take this long berth. We're going to go straight through. And his 12 closest friends, his, the, the 12 disciples are, are really against this. But because it's Jesus, you've got to do it. So they go straight through. And Jesus did this with a purpose because they're walking through this land. It's the middle of the day. It's around lunchtime. People are getting hangry and it's the Middle East. So people are also getting hot and sweaty. And Jesus said, I'm going to rest here. You, my friends, head out, go get some food. But Jesus did that with a purpose. 
because he knew that by resting at that specific place, a woman was going to come along and he was going to minister to her. Now, this was, and it doesn't seem like it, but this was a risk for Jesus. Firstly, as we said, he was a Jewish man. This person that he was going to minister to was a Samaritan. So uh, there's already that sort of awkward racial tension there uh, where they're both meant to hate each other. Secondly, uh, in, in the times of antiquity, in Bible times, women were seen as lesser. So uh, by Jesus associating with this, with this Samaritan woman, uh, if people saw, they would think, man, that is not a good look for him. And Jesus would, Jesus would be affected because he's interacting with someone lesser. And then again, to take it the next step further, this Samaritan woman had pretty terrible luck when it came to relationships. Uh, she had had five husbands. And then she was now living with someone, living with a boyfriend who wasn't her husband. So she was a woman of low repute. Jesus risked here his his whole ministry, his reputation, his image could have been marred because people could have heard, ah, you know, this single Jesus guy and now he's hanging out with this, not only a Samaritan, not only a woman, but a woman who's ready to, to kind of get with him. But Jesus knew that she was more important than his, than his image and reputation. And he ministered to her anyway. And that's what he's trying to get at in this parable here. It's more important to help others than to not. The priest and the Levite had attitudes of how will helping this man affect me? Will, it will make me unclean. I don't want to do that. But the Samaritan had a, 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 a better frame of reference when he said, if I don't help this man, how will that affect him? And that's my big idea today. It's not about how helping affects you. It's about how not helping affects them. As a theology student, um, one thing that is constantly on my mind is um, jobs and job prospects. And basically to uh, increase my chances of getting jobs, I... I, I want to manage and manage my influence and manage my reputation so that it's as high as it possibly can be um, to, to look better in the eyes of, you know, hiring conferences. Uh, there have been times, there have been situations in my personal life uh, and, and things that have gone on in the world where I've thought to myself, I better not say anything here or I better not get involved or I better not stand up for the little guy because I don't know how that's going to have influence uh, my, my, uh, my job prospects, basically. But that's not what it's about. That's me showing a Levite and a priest kind of attitude from this story. That's me saying, if I help here, it's going to affect me. But as we've just seen, that's not the attitude that Jesus wants us to have. Jesus wants us to have an instinctive heart attitude to help others, because what if we don't help others? Jesus wants us to stand up and he wants us to see and understand that if we don't help people who are, who are being discriminated against because of their gender in the ministry, that's going to affect women. Jesus wants us to stand up and understand that if we ostracize people because of their sexuality, that's not going to, that's not, it's not about us just because we spend time with them. It's not about us and, and how other people are going to look at them. If we ostracize them, it's about them. Jesus wants us to understand that it's not about me saying a political statement when it comes to the death and the beatings that happen to Aboriginals inside of prisons. It's not about me. It's about how if I don't affirm that their lives matter, it's about them and how it affects them. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes. Now go and do the same. I really wanted um, to, to bring you a message that was unique. I really wanted to bring you some kind of profound theological truth so that you as the congregation would see me in a better light so that I could impress you know, Nimrod and Alex and Michaela and Brock, Kale, you know, all these people. I wanted to be impressive in that way. But it's not about me as we've found so many times. And the Spirit continually guided me back to this one message, the most simple thing you could draw out of here. Go and do the same. Go and go out of your way. Get dirty, get bloody for people. Put your reputation on the line 
put your finances on the line, to borrow from other scriptures, clothe, feed, house the poor and the needy, help the widows and the orphans, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. Let's pray. Lord God, I uh, just want to thank you for who you are and who the, you've called us to be. I want to thank you for loving us uh, like we could never be loved by anyone else, Lord. I want to thank you for the messages that you impart. Lord, I pray that you will help this message get through to the hearts of every person listening. I pray that you will bless those that listen and help them be a blessing to others because of that. Lord, I pray that you will continue to continue to be active in our lives, Lord. Continue to work on our hearts. Continue to chip away anything we don't need and add to what we do need, Lord. And I pray that we will become more and more like you until you return, Lord Jesus. I thank you once again for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, and everything that you will continue to do. And it is in your mighty name that I pray today, Jesus. Amen. Let's go, church. Hey, what an amazing word from our very own Jesse DePruzel. If you are inspired and encouraged by this message, feel free to say in the live chat, yeah, dupes, we love this guy and we love what God is doing through him. Thank you so much, church, for joining us here today and we look forward to having you join us again. Now, I just want to remind you to go to collegechurch.info and click on the orange tab to access the questions to discuss in your circles this week. Those questions are available right now. If you need help building a circle over Zoom, feel free to contact our church pastors through collegechurch.info. Look, as we close, something we love to say at the end of every church service is this. As you go into your mission field, which is your network of relationships, know that you are making disciples with the presence and the power of Jesus. In your network of relationships, build a circle, dive into the Word of God, and always be kind. See you next week. Wake up, miracle worker.